to explain that. What? I don't understand what I'm saying. Oh, oh. Okay, warning. In this video, I will be talking only in English. Не волнуйтесь, ребята. Я добавлю для вас русские субтитры, чтобы вы поняли. Hello and assalamualaikum. Welcome to my channel. Okay. Um, my name is Aisha. I'm currently 19 years old, and I'm from Kazakhstan. So in today's video, uh, I'm going to talk about the national exam, the national exam of Kazakhstan, which is in Russian we call as ENT, and in Kazakh language we call as Obata. You really will like this video, and I hope you will get more information. The reason why that I haven't taken the ENT. So let's go. First, what is actually ENT? ENT, which is in Russian, we call as Единое национальное тестирование. As for in Kazakh, which is we call it shortly OBT, that stands for Oltok Parangai Testilio. But for me in English, I will call it as a national exam of Kazakhstan. So what is actually about? So Yente is a system of assessing the knowledge of the graduates in the Republic of Kazakhstan. And the results of Yente are recognized by colleges and universities in Kazakhstan as well as the ENT scores will be mattered to the Olashak Presidential Scholarship in Kazakhstan. I did it. <laughs> okay. So what is actually the process and the ENT? What actually do? What is that inside? Okay, so students they one day they have to pass five subjects uh, and three subjects are main, which is mathematical literacy and reading, reading literacy and history of Kazakhstan. Other two subjects are core subjects, depends on what program and what profession you are going to study. And as for me, I choose two core subjects are English and world history because I want to study for international relations. Actually, I prepared for Yen Te approximately three months and I bought like a lot of books, notes to prepare for this because I was aiming to get scholarship in Kazakhstan. Until on December, I was privately uh, called to meet up with my headmaster talk about some matter that she wants to talk about. Um, so I went there. I went to my headmaster's room and my homeroom teacher room teacher was sitting beside my headmaster. The, it went well, I think it was okay. She was actually praising me about how I was hardworking and a good student. And actually, she said that she wanted to make me Altenbilge, which is Altenbilge in English means the medal or the gold badge. So, what is the golden badge means? It's this badge, which is awarded for the excellent students in Kazakhstan. You guys may know that this maybe sound unfair because I was an excellent student only for three years, and I have heard that you have to be the excellent student starting from 5th grade until you graduate, if I'm not mistaken. That is why I think that I don't deserve it. I just stood there quietly listening to her talk. So she told me that especially Altenbilge was targeted in Yente. Means that if you take Yente, then they will be looking first for Altenbilge. Their, their test, score high mark, or deserve to get scholarship or not because Altenbilge means uh, it can help you to get scholarship but I was not interested since she said it was targeted in Yente she requested me to take out my hijab take out my scarf that's what she requested me and that moment I felt like so blur and so shocked and 
and I really didn't know what to do. I was just very quiet. And also another thing, he told me like why I have to wear hijab when you are very young and you are beautiful. You you can wear it later when you turn adult, when you are married. She ordered me to for to take out my hijab starting from next week. I mean like I was so young, I was only 17 years old girl sitting there and listening to what my what was she what she's saying. classroom and maybe in the moment my classmates may realize that it happened something odd between me and my headmaster maybe thinking too much like like well, should I take in there should I be out the middle girl will I get scholarship will I even pass my end that I was I was I have been thinking for so long I think my brother noticed me like I was not in the good mood and something happened the class had finished after three hours yeah I have been I have been in that mood for three hours there in school so I went back home opening a door I saw my mother was sitting on the sofa and she looked at me I mean she knew something happened she knew something that disturbed me so <laughs> I was just small. I put my bag down and I ran straight to my mother immediately and I started crying. I cried so hard, so badly because I felt the pain. Like it felt the pain as if I lost someone who is precious to me. But it was just a hijab that I have to take out. Yes. For me it was very painful. I told to my mom what actually happened to me about this thing, about Yente. So she told me not to take yente and don't be out of milga and just take aisles. But later on, she told me that it was my decision whether I will take yente, I will choose yente, or choose aisles. Like, I didn't know anything. I was just worried. Like she gave me a time to me to think. Of course, my mother. She will let me to decide. Then I didn't attend class. I didn't. I was like absent for three days and all day I was doing just lying down in my bed and thinking about this matter of course I prayed and I asked guidance from Allah to show me the answer and show me the right decision so after like a long time of thinking I came to decide not to take yente and just prepare for IELTS examination maybe you guys may think why I have to cry just for hijab but hear me out guys hijab for me was something that I have to obey like hijab when I wear it I feel like I know who I am but without it I feel like I feel so empty with hijab I always feel protected and I will be more confident that and of course hijab represents the modesty piety and devotion to God. That is how my story ends of why I didn't take Yente and the reason why I refused to take and now you know it why. My advice is hmm, and if you are in a difficult situation of course the perfect cure is that you have to pray and ask from Allah and you must have a right decision so I think myself that I did the right decision because I didn't throw hijab and I alhamdulillah I'm still alive and I'm here and up here studying in Malaysia and I'm very happy that thanks to my mother's hard working, my parents belief and their trust and I am up here and thanks to Allah that it was unpredictable for me but I'm very thankful. This is the end of my video and thank you for watching. Assalamu alaikum.